So, first of all, thanks for coming to this session in which I will discuss serverless uh, Java. Uh, before we start, uh, some logistics. So, first of all, um, despite my French accent, I'm not French, but I'm from Belgium, from the French-speaking side of Belgium. <laughs> So I work at Oracle in the serverless team. So I live in Belgium, but I do report to HQ uh, in the US. Uh, this was me some time ago in a conference in Sweden. Um, well, you might not be able to read what's there, but basically uh, someone during that conference tweeted that it's not a real conference unless you read Oracle's CFRB statement at least once. So here we go. So, Anybody is using th that kind of Mac? No, with the new keyboards? Okay, no? Are you happy with the keyboards? No? Okay, so I'm not happy either. So I will do some demos. So if demos are failing, it's not me, it's really the keyboard. So today we're gonna make, we're gonna build, and if something breaks, again, that's the keyboard. So let's discuss serverless. Well, I'm missing a few slides. Well, first, um, serverless. Whenever I say serverless, I really mean uh, function as a services. So what function as a services, what FAS means? Basically, we have this, this notion of a function. A function is basically a small piece of code that will get something in input, it will perform a job, and it will produce most of the time an output. So we have this notion of a well-bounded piece of code that will basically do something. So it's basically one single task, and that task will be triggered by the, ex by the arrival of uh, some uh, payload. Uh, it's not a function as we have in mathematics in the sense that a function can also have some side effects. A new developer will spend your time writing function. And then we have this as a services piece, which is basically the compute element on which your function will run on. So you as a developer will basically spend your time writing function, and the main idea is that you don't have to focus about the underlying platform. It's someone else's responsibility to make sure that everything works. So it's someone else's responsibility to make sure that the platform is provisioned, that the platform is managed, that the platform is patched, that the platform can scale, and so on and so on. So you, at the end of the day, will just write function. You will give those functions to a fast platform, and it will be up to the fast platform to make sure that your function runs. Now, if we look at the market, we can clearly see that there is a strong interest within the serverless space, within the fast space. Now, the question that we can ask, okay, what about uh, Java within that space? We all know that Java is very, very popular. So, basically, Java on GitHub is the second most used programming language. And it's not something new. Um, so, this is a chart that basically shows that at least since 2012, Java was second, then it moved to the first place on GitHub, it went back to second, and so on. Anyway, I think that we can all agree that Java is a very popular, popular programming language. So what about Java within the serverless space? Uh, this was a survey conducted by the serverless frameworks uh, guys, and basically they, were, they asked their users, okay, what language are you using, which language are you using today to write your serverless functions? And you see we have this big uh, arc here, which is basically Node 6. If you had that node six to uh, node four, basically over 75% of serverless frameworks users are using node, and hence JavaScript to write serverless function. Then we have Python, Python 3.6, which is nearly 10%, and Python 2.7, 6%. So over 15% of those users are, write, are using Python to write serverless function. And here we have Java, which is not even at 5%. So clearly, we don't have a lot of metrics, but the few metrics that we have shows that Java today is not very popular in the serverless space. And the trend is not that great. So this was the second question out of that survey. And basically, the, so the first question was, what are you using today? And the, the, the second question was, what are you planning to use? And you basically see that, at least for the serverless framework, Java is quite flat below 5%, sometimes it's above 5%, but nevertheless, we show that it's basically a flat line. So how can we explain that? On one hand, we have a very pro popular programming language, Java, and on the other hand, we have this new space, which is quite out today, and clearly Java uh, is not widely used. Well, first, we should look at the historical landscape. Even though that's a pretty new uh, landscape, uh, we, should, we can look at the historical vendor, the historical fast platform brand vendors, and what we see is that basically out of the three major fast platform providers, 
so we have Amazon. Amazon supports Java 8 since 2015, so that's okay. Microsoft is only supporting Java since last month. Well, since February, so basically since five or six weeks. So that might explain why Java is not yet popular in that space. Google today doesn't support Java. I'm pretty sure that we'll do at some point in time. So the fact that the major fast platform provider today, uh, out of the three, only one support Java for quite some time might explain why Java is not very popular. Next, given that the serverless space, the fast space is pretty new, um, what we observe is that basically startups are basically using whatever the cool technology of the day is, and it's only when they need to, to basically mature, when they need to scale, that they are looking at uh, switching to Java. So we might expect, expect that some of the development that are done today within the fast space over time, whenever they need to scale, will probably switch to Java. Now, something else that might explain why Java is not popular within the fast space is maybe Java is not a good fit for that, as simple as that. So if we look at the beginning of a serverless function, AWS uh, Lambda function, were basically used to glue together multiple services. Maybe Java is not a good fit for writing that kind of glue, glue code. Uh, we all know that Java is a highly tuned virtual machine that can basically, uh, that has been designed to basically run long-lived applications. So maybe, given that we have uh, serverless functions which are by nature short-lived, maybe there is a mismatch and Java is not designed to write such short-lived application. So there are multiple reasons that might possibly explain why Java is not popular within the serverless space today. And when we at Oracle started to work on our serverless offering, we basically set ourselves the goal of making sure that Java can be used to write serverless functions. So we basically set us, we basically define a set of blueprints that we think are important for using Java within the serverless space. Plain old Java, the ability to use established tool chain, the ability to build a complex application, uh, low latency, high performance is, a, is something which is quite important. And then we also have to, to make sure that we can cope with the rich GV, GVM ecosystem that we have today. So to illustrate that, I'm going to discuss uh, FN, which is an open source fast platform. Um, so Oracle is, one, is, um, is an important contributor to that uh, fast platform. And in fact, FN is used under uh, Oracle Function, which is Oracle Fast Platform that has been announced uh, some time ago and that will be available uh, shortly. So FN is an open source container native Fast Platform. Container native basically means that everything in FN is a container. So if you take a function in FN, that's simply a container. Now you as a function developer don't, ha don't have to worry about writing those containers. You will just give a piece of code and it will be up to the FN tooling to turn that into a container and expose it as you would like to. Uh, it's Apache V2. Everything is on GitHub. So one of the benefits of that is that uh, it's fully open source, so you can, have look at, you can look at the code, but you can also take FN, the fast platform, and run it on-premises, run it in a different cloud than the Oracle cloud, or you can also run it on-premises. Now, if you, are going, if you are going to run a fast platform on premises, on premises, you have to understand that with the fast platform, we basically have two roles. We have the function developers and we have the fast platform provider. If you are running uh, FN on premises or in a different cloud, you will basically have to cope with the two roles. So you will be the function developer, but also the fast platform provider. If you understand that, there's no, there's no problem with that. Technically, FN is written in Go. It makes sense. At the end of the day, it's an infrastructure project, project such as Kubernetes, Docker, and so on. But FN is polyglot. So FN supports Go function, but also Java function, JavaScript function, Python function, and so on and so on. So let's have a look at uh, FN uh, in action. So the first thing that you need to have to run FN on your machine is to have Docker running. I have Docker running and there's nothing there, so I'm going to start uh, FN. I hope that you can read at the back of the room. So if I look at my Docker, now I have FN running uh, within my machine. So from now on, I can bootstrap function, so I can create a function. For that, I'm going to use the FN CLI. So the FN CLI is the gateway, is your gateway to FN. So you bootstrap function, you control FN, uh, you, uh, you configure F, uh, uh, FN and so on. Everything is done through that FN CLI. So to bootstrap a function, FN init, I specify which runtime I want to use. 
I'm going to use Java, even that's, that's, that's the topic of the day. And then I need to give my function a name. And there we go, we should have a Duke function. So if we look in the Duke, in the Duke directory, we have a bunch of files which have been created. So we have a hello function. So it's simply uh, a Java class with one method. That's basically our serverless Java function. We have another class, which is a hello function test. So it's basically a GUnit test for the function that we just have at the beginning, that we just have uh, above, sorry. And you, as a developer, will basically take that and extend that. If you look here, we have two files. We have a pom.xml, so basically a serverless Java function is simply a Maven project. And we also have this func.yaml. So if we look at this func.yaml, so let's have a look. It's simply a file that contains some uh, metadata for the function, like the name of the function, the version, the runtime that we're going to use, the different image that we're going to use. So for example, you can see that uh, the build image uh, by default, it's a GDK 11 image, and the runtime image, it's a GRE image. Something that we do for you. Um, we also have this uh, command, which is basically the serverless function itself. So this is the Java class, so come example fn hello function, and then handle request. This is our uh, Java uh, serverless function. So it's a Maven project, so for example, what I can do, if I can kill that guy, I can test my function. So Maven test. So the function is being built and it's being tested. So it's a, it's a simple hello world out of the box. And obviously uh, it works. So the next thing I want to do, I want to run my function. For that, I need to deploy my function on a FN server. I'm going to use my local FN server. So to deploy a function in FN, we need to deploy that function to an application. So an application is simply a way of grouping functions together. So FN create, app, and let's call it the app Berlin. So FN LS app. So if I list the apps, I have a bunch of application and I have my new Berlin app. So now if I look in this Berlin app, it should be empty. So FN list function within the Berlin app. No function found for app Berlin. Right? So now I can deploy that function to that Berlin app. So fn deploy app Berlin. Uh, I either need to specify the function, but given that I'm in a function directory, it will just pick up the local func.yaml. The only thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add uh, minus local, and I'm going to add a verbose flag to, so that we can see what happened behind the scenes. And you see that behind the scenes, basically, uh, FN is using Docker to basically take your Java code and turn it into a container image of uh, your code. So basically, your Java code is being turned into a serverless function that happens to be technically uh, a Docker image. So um, the local flag here is simply to avoid, because by default, whenever the function is built, it's being pushed to a registry. So just to save some time, I don't push my registry given that everything is local. So now I can invoke that function. So first, if we look in the Berlin app, I should, if I list the function within the Berlin app, I now have a function that I can invoke. So if I invoke Berlin and the function is called Duke. So the first time it takes a bit of time and you see the result, it's a hello world. Nothing really fancy here. So given that it's a Maven project, we can uh, use our preferred ID. So IntelliJ, NetBeans, Eclipse, whatever. It's just simply Maven. So IntelliJ is booting. My project is nearly there. So if we look at here, so we have the test class, which is uh, really some simple GUnit test for our default hello world function. And here in main, sorry, in the main I said, source main, this is our Java function. So you see nothing really fancy here. So we have the, 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 the package, the, the, 
the class, and then we have a handle request. It could be something else. It doesn't matter. We have one method that gets a string in input, and it produces a string in output. The thing that is quite important here is that there's nothing specific to FN. So there's no annotation. There's no interface. There's, it's basically plain old Java uh, code. So this serverless function is pretty basic. String in, string out. So what we can do, for example, let's say that we can create a new type uh, event. So private, uh, private, assuming I can type string. So an event as a name and an event, uh, let's say it has a date. So I need constructor, oops. I need a default constructor and a getter and setters for. So what I've done here, I've simply created a new event type. So what I can say now, what I can, what I can do now, so I, uh, let's see, uh, event. So I can create a new event. So the venue will be, let's say, the input, and the date will be, uh, let's just take a shortcut, it will be today. So now I can say that my function, my service function, is returning that type. It doesn't work. Why? Because obviously I need to change the signature. So basically, uh, in this case, my function is basically getting a string in output and it produced this new event type, right? So let's deploy that again and see what happened. So given that I've changed the code of my function, my function is being rebuilt and it will be uh, redeployed. And it, it doesn't work. Anybody has a guess why? No? So if we look at what is happening behind the scenes. We build a function, and then we test the function. And obviously, the tests are not pacing. So I need to make sure I fix my, my test. <laughs> but you will see. You will see. It should work. You see? No, no. You see, it works. Now, that's a joke. Don't do that at home. But obviously, I don't have the time to fix the test all the time. I repeat, I repeat that's a joke. So uh, now I can invoke my new function. So uh, I will pass it some payload. Let's call it uh, Berlin fn invoke. Uh, the application is Berlin, and the function was Duke, right? And let's GQ that. Oops. So this is the result of my function. It gets a string, and now it produces um, this new event type, which is uh, unmarshaled to uh, JSON. And if you look here, uh, let's see. If you look here, again, there's nothing specific here regarding the fact that this has to be turned into uh, some JSON document. Now I could, so basically, fn provide input and output coercion. So I could also use any kind of type as uh, input. Now. Uh, Everything is running locally. At the end of the day, you still want to deploy your function into the cloud. So I'm going to switch to a different uh, context. So I'm going to switch to uh, an Oracle Cloud context. If I look at the application that I have there, so I, I just have the core application. So basically, this is FN running within the data center in the US. So FN create app uh, Berlin, right? Now I'm going to deploy my function again. Oops. But obviously, this time, I need to make sure I push my function because uh, it's remote. So everything is being pushed. And we have to go through the conference network. And now, if I inspect, inspect, I said, Berlin, uh, Duke, uh, sorry, if I inspect, FN, and I have an, so, Oops, if I can cut and paste that, sorry. So curl minus uh, D uh, Berlin and the URL. Now I'm doing a remote invocation through a data center in the US. So in the interest of time, I'm going to switch to my local context. So if we go back to the slides, so I've quickly shown the Java 
uh, FDK, so the Function Development Kit. So FN provides multiple FDK, including a Java one. So the Java FDK provides uh, optimized image, so a build image and a runtime image, so that you don't have to worry about that. It provides support for GUnit, it provides support for Maven, and so on and so on. So this is one of the nice things that you, can, that you get whenever you are using the FDK. Now, you can still develop Java function with FN without the FDK, but clearly it's a lot easier to use the Java FDK. So, plain old Java, yes, you saw that my serverless function had nothing specific to uh, the underlying uh, serverless platform. Established toolchain, yes, I've used Maven, I've used my ID, so we're good on that front. So what about the ability to build complex application? So your, ser your serverless function are short-lived. Uh, they will be invoked, they will live for 100, 200, 500 milliseconds, and then they will die, most of the time. So whenever you need to hold the state, you shouldn't hold the state within the function itself. It's just too expensive. You, can't, you cannot hold the state within a function that will live for, let's say, 300 milliseconds. Doesn't make sense. So you need to hold the state outside of the function. Having said that, there are a specific use case where it makes sense to have a, a serverless function that holds the states. And that is whenever you have a function that needs to orchestrate multiple functions. So think the following. So you have a main function that will invoke another function. This is an asynchronous invocation, so it will wait for the result. Whenever the main function has the result, it will invoke another uh, function, and so on and so on. Not only that, some of those functions might, al might also fail. So the main function has to deal with that. For that, in FN, we have what we call flow. And we have a flow uh, API that is Java-based for writing uh, those kind of uh, functions. So to illustrate that, so if I look at my Docker here, so I'm going to start a few other components. Now, if you are using Oracle function, that's not something that you would have to do, given that the platform is managed. Start. So I'm starting three additional containers, and I will explain what they are doing. And I'm just configuring some my uh, function. So if we look at so we are we now have four containers running. So we still have FN server. Uh, and now we have a flow server. That's basically a component that is sitting aside of FN server, and that's the component, the server that will handle, that will deal with orchestration. And then I have two additional containers that are just used for my demo to uh, help you to see what's going on behind the scenes. So the demo that I have is basically a simple triple trip booking application. So we want to book trips, and whenever we book a trip, we want to book a flight, we want to book an hotel, a car, and at the end, we also want to send an email. So for that, I have multiple functions that are written using Java, using Ruby, uh, uh, Node, and Python. And what I'm going to focus on is this trip booking application, which is written using the Java FDK and the FNflow API. So FN, uh, LS, um, FN, I think it's the travel application. So if I look at the travel application, I have basically all my functions already deployed. And I'm going to invoke this uh, function that will basically orchestrate my uh, other uh, function. So for that, I just need to pass it, let's see, not script. I need to pass uh, some payload to that function. Uh, so fn invoke, uh, that's the, let's see, it's the travel application and that's the trip function. So the thing is that it's not super visual. So that's why I have my additional containers. They basically help, help to see uh, what is going on behind the scenes. Whoops. You see, that's what I was telling you about the broken keyboard. So it, fn command not found. And the reason is that here, this is not a space. This is something else that looks like a space. So if I do this, it works. No, but I, I was not lying about the keyboard. And basically, we see that whenever we try to book, so we have the main function, and that book a flight, that book an hotel, and that book a car, and finally, we have this function that is invoked. Something that we can uh, notice is that if we invoke that again, it's way faster. Why? Because the FN infrastructure is keeping our containers out. So it keeps, it keeps the function hot for, by default, it's 30 uh, seconds. So this is the happy path. But obviously, given that we are going through the network, uh, everything might 
fails. So to just make sure that something fails, I have these additional tools. So whenever I try to book a car, it will just fail. Right? So if I invoke that again, we should have a different behavior. So you see, we book a flight, we book an hotel, we were not able to book a car, so basically we have to roll back all the booking. So we cancel the flight, we cancel the hotel, and we cancel, well, we basically cancel everything. And finally, we send a mail to the user to, to telling, okay, so we, sorry, we were not able to book your trip. So that's in a nutshell, the FN Flow API in action. Technically, it's highly inspired from the compression stage API of Java SE8. So if you know how to use the compression stage API, you will be up and running with the uh, FN Flow API very quickly. Now, you should only use that API whenever you have this notion of function orchestration. Uh, the backend function that you're invoking doesn't have to be written in Java. Here I was using Python, Ruby, and Node uh, function. So that was the FN Flow API. So ability to be complex application, yes, that's something that we can easily do. So what about the low latency and high performance? So whenever we invoke a serverless Java function that runs within a container, we want that function to start as quickly as possible, right? And at the end of the day, we're talking about a Java virtual machine running into containers. So we want our GVM to start as quickly as possible. So there are multiple techniques that we can use uh, for that. But first, something that is important is the fact that whenever we have a GVM running within a container, it has to be aware of the fact that the GVM is running within a container. So if you look through uh, all the release of uh, OpenGDK and Java, basically, with each release come a set of enhancements that are specific to running GVM within a container. That's something which is important. So to start fast, there are multiple techniques that, that we can use. Uh, the first one is CDS, class data sharing. Anybody knows CDS? No? Yeah. CDS is something which is quite old. CDS was added in Java SC5. So the idea with CDS is that whenever you start an application, so Java does jar something, uh, your jar is unpacked, your class are loaded into memory, and for, to load a class into memory, basically, a, need a, a, sorry, a bunch of things need to happen, like the, your bytecode needs to be checked for security, and so on and so on. And this is very expensive. And not only that, there are, well, there's more than one class. There's, there are a bunch of classes. So each time you load, you start your application, all of that has, needs to happen. So the idea of CDS is basically to do that once. Once this is done, the GVM takes an in-memory snapshot of all your class in memory, so that the next time your Java code is started, the GVM will just bring that in-memory uh, snapshot uh, again. And this is way faster than having to go through all the steps again and again. So CDS at the beginning in Java C5 was for the, uh, the runtime.jar, and in Java 10, I believe, uh, CDS was extended for the application classes. So it's something that you can use. So using CDS will reduce, will increase the startup time of your classes, of your, sorry, of your Java service function. So the next thing that we have to keep in mind, given that we're talking about uh, containers, we need to make sure that our uh, containers are as small as possible. So we, are, we really have to think about all the layers that we have in our serverless uh, Java function, because we want those layers to be as minimal as possible. In terms of serverless Java function, there are three types of layer. The Java function layer with its dependency, the Java runtime layer, and the operating system layer. At the Java function layer, there's not much that we can do. The only advice that we give you is that watch out for your dependency especially the transitive one. Don't bring dependencies that are not uh, used. But at the Java runtime layer and the, uh, at the OS layer, there are uh, things that we can do to basically reduce the container size and hence improve the startup time of that container. The first thing that we can uh, do is to use an highly optimized uh, base image, like Alpine. So Alpine is a Linux distribution that is highly optimized and is security minded. Alpine those days weighed, I think, 4.2 megabyte, and that's a full Linux distro that you can use. So the thing is that out of the box, Java doesn't run on top of Alpine because Java use libc, and uh, Alpine use an alternative to libc, which is Muzzles. The good news is that there's Project Portola, whose goal is basically trying, well, not trying, but making sure that Java can work nicely on top of muscles, and hence uh, Alpine. The next thing that we can also do is basically look at the Java runtime 
that you are using. So the first thing, the first advice, don't use a GDK to run your Java function. That's something that we do for you uh, whenever you are using uh, FN. Two reasons for that. Uh, first, if you are using the GDK to simply run a function, you are basically uh, using a very large uh, layers just for that GRE. Lo sorry, just for that GDK. And not only that, in that layers, there are a bunch of things that are not needed. So you don't want to have those things if they are not needed. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to reduce the potential surface attack of your code. So don't carry the GDK if you only need the GRE. To give you some idea, we can use GPMS, which was added to uh, Java SE9, and with, which gives us the ability to have a modular Java runtime. So a whole GDK 12 weights almost 320 megabytes. That is quite a lot. There is no uh, GD, Open GDK 12 GRE, but to give you an idea, I've looked at the Open GDK 11 GRE Slim, which weighed 217 megabytes. So you can already save 100 megabytes just by going from a GDK to a GRE. But we can use GPMS. We can use Jlink to basically uh, have a GRE that will only carry uh, the bits, the modules of the GRE that our function needs. So to get a starting point, a GRE 12 with all the modules, doesn't make sense to do that, but basically if you carry all the modules, you will have 168 megabyte GRE. We can remove some useless stuff, such as header file, man page, and so on. Uh, we save another 25 megabytes. We have two levels of compression, compress 107, and if we are using compress 2, so zip deflate, uh, we, we are going from 168 megabytes to 83 megabytes, so we save a lot just by doing that. And this is for all the modules of the GRE. Obviously, we only want to carry the modules that our serverless function uh, needs, and that is basically the base modules. So I've done the same exercise. So, uh, so using the base modules, but also the, log, the logging modules, because most of the function will use loggings. So if you do that, you go down to 47 megabytes. And again, you can re remove useless stuff, 41 megabytes. And if you are using uh, the compression to the max, 32 megabytes for a GRE. So the GRE that is needed to run your function. So basically, Worst case scenario, you, carry the, you run your function within a full GDK, 380 megabytes, and if you are using uh, Jlink smartly, you can go down to 232 megabytes, so 10 times smaller. To do that in FN, it works like this. So uh, let's see, FN init, and this time I'm going to switch to init, sorry, image, oops, uh, Jlink init, and I'm going to call that function uh, jlink. Okay, so if I look at the jlink function, uh, let's see, more source. So it's a Java function. This, it, it happened to be a Java function 12. So let's deploy that function. fn deploy, let's deploy to Berlin. Uh, let's do a local deploy and oops. And the function is called jlink. And we can add a verbose to see what happened behind the scenes. Well, some of those layers were already built. But so let's first invoke that function. So Berlin, Berlin, I said, jlink. So it's a, it's a very basic function, right? Please tell me which day. And then you give it a day. So let's say that uh, we're today, I think. If an invoke. Uh, Berlin, Jlink. So on Tuesday, you should get back to work. On the other hand, on Friday, you should prepare a plan for the weekend. So that's basically how it works. And if we look at quickly at the code, uh, Jlink source. This function is using, for example, the, the new switch expression statement that is in preview in uh, Java 12. Now, if we look at the function itself, so anybody is using dive to explore Docker image? No? That's a tool you need to look at. So dive fn, so dive fn, so the function is Ber Berlin, I said, and the function is jlink. So this is my function. So those are the multiple layers that we have in the function. Let's. 
So the first layer, 4.1, is the operating system layer, right? So 4.1 for a full uh, Linux, that's not a lot. It, then we have this 2.4 megabyte. So that's basically uh, the function, so the function.jar and its dependency. And if we look at the size of that, it's not, it's not a lot. So the, well, it's a bit, we can't really see, but for basically 2.4 megabyte for the function it's, and all its dependency. Then what we have, um, we have these 33 megabyte layers, which is the operating system. So it's basically the custom uh, GRE that we've built when we deploy our application. And it's here. It only carries the modules that are needed by my, our serverless function, but it doesn't make sense to carry more modules than that because they won't be used anyway. And then we also have this 20 kilobyte, which is a shared object that is used by FN. So in a nutshell, you saw that we can use Java serverless function. Um, and if we're going to use GPMS and Jlink to build a function, we can have a very small Docker image for our function. So 40 megabytes in total for a function with the operating system. And the nice thing about that is that the function is using uh, hotspot. So it will, it will get all the benefit, like, uh, the, well, all the optimization that have been put in hotspot for many years. So it's really plain old Java, again, with all the pros. Uh, so, let's continue. Oops. So, we can go a step further. Uh, so, the, the, again, the idea is always that we want to have image as small as possible because whenever we start a serverless function, uh, that Docker image has to be has to be loaded by the FN server infrastructure from the registry. Obviously, you want to have your registry as close as possible from your uh, FN uh, infrastructure. But still, if you have a two gigabyte uh, Docker image, I mean, the FN server will have to load th that two megabyte, that two gigabyte uh, image from the registry. So the idea is really we, sh we need to shrink the Docker image as small as possible. You saw that. In FN, it's pretty easy to do. So if you want to use Jlink, you just init using init image Jlink, and you will have a Java function that used by default Jlink. We can go a step further. We can go further than that and use Graal. So Graal is an open source polyglot uh, high performance virtual machine developed by Oracle Labs. And one of the features that Graal provides is native, ima native image. Native image is basically ahead of time compilation. So you give it some a piece of Java code, and the uh, AOT compiler of Graal will produce a native uh, executable. So let's have a look. Um, so if you want to create a Java function that uses Graal, again, fn init, init uh, image, and uh, it's native init this time. And let's call it Graal. If we look at the Java code that has been created, main java so it's again the same hello world uh, function that we're giving you now i'm not going to deploy that one because the the, nice, the the thing is that uh, ahead of time compilation takes time so building building that function will take like two minutes uh, but if i look in my uh, fn running locally uh, let's look at the different app i think that our, i already have yes uh, I think that here, so FNLS, FN, IBAN. Oh, I hope that I still have them locally. Let's have a look. Uh, again, that's my keyboard. Yeah, I don't have it. Um, so let's see. VM, yes, yes, okay. Um, so no. Yes, okay. Here I have a Graal function. So let's have a look at that function. So it's basically the same. Um, Functions, so and the function is called Graal FN. Okay, so this is my uh, Graal function. 
4.4, that's the operating system base image. Sixteen megabyte, that's the function itself. So that's basically a native executable, so an, an executable that will run on Linux that has been compiled out of my Java code. Uh, there's no separate Java runtime needed to run that code. Everything is built within that 16 megabyte uh, binary. So given that we are starting from Java code, for example, uh, we are expecting to have memory management. We expect to have some kind of GC. So that uh, native executable embed substrate VM that will provide those kind of capability that my code expects. And then we still have this 20 kilobyte uh, shared object that is needed by FN. So you see that basically by using GRAL ahead of time compilation, we can have a very small uh, Docker image that embeds everything. The operating system, the function that basically include everything. In this case, our Docker image, our serverless function image is 21 megabyte. Operating system and the function that has been uh, IoT compiled starting from Java code. Now, there are a few limitations with Graal. For example, Graal only, only supports Java 8 today. That's something that the, uh, the Graal team is working on. Uh, if you are relying heavily on reflection, Graal is probably not a good fit for that. But if, I mean, if you know those restrictions and if you can use Graal, you will uh, certainly get uh, a lot of benefits. So, low latency, high performance, I think that we saw that we have many techniques that we can use on the Java side to make sure that serverless Java function can start uh, very quickly. Now, very quickly, about the rich ecosystem that we have. Uh, every six months, we have a new Java release. Uh, we have Java the language, but we have other languages that run on top of the Java virtual machine, such as Kotlin, for example. Um, and then there are other projects, such, such as GraalVM, and so on. So when we started to work on FN, we wanted to make sure that we were able to cope with that. So for that, we have added uh, the init image capability in FN that I've already used for JLink and for uh, Graal. And basically, the idea is that um, init image, so whenever you do init image, the parameter that you are passing here, native init, in init, sorry, native init, that's basically a Docker image that will produ produce all the artifacts that your function needs. So that's something that we can use today, for example, to support Java 13. So Java 13 init, uh, let's call this function Duke. Oops, sorry, fn init, init image. So if we look at uh, Duke 13, this is our, uh, the code that has been generated. And just to prove you that this is indeed uh, Java 13, so var var equals system, system, I said, get proper, and I think it's java.version. Yes. Okay, so this should get gets us the, the version of the Java virtual machine. And w when I started to program, I was told that I need to use uh, meaningful names for my variables. So those days we can do something like this, variable. Variable, I said. So if we return that meaningful name, so let's run that function in Berlin. Um, local Berlin and the function is 13, yes. So it will be built. If I invoke Berlin, Duke 13. And you see that indeed, this is a Java 13 GVM that runs under the hood. So FN init gives us the ability to easily support uh, the rich uh, G uh, GVM ecosystem. So you can also use a Kotlin init, for example, if you want to have a Kotlin function. So rich GVM ecosystem, yes. So serverless Java, does it have a feature? Absolutely. I mean, with that, we have OpenGDK, we have GraalVM. There's uh, FN, so with, we really think that Java in the serverless space is, what, that's basically just the beginning of that. So the call to action, everything is free, everything is open source. We are running a lab uh, at the end of the day, so uh, you can attend that 
session. That's a hands-on session. If you want to try uh, FN, github.com slash FN projects slash FN. The only thing that you need to have is FN running on your machine and you're good to go. In less than two minutes, you will have your fun first function deploy. Not only that, if you like it, give it a star. It's free, so that's, a, that's something that is always appreciated. So I will quickly mention Oracle Function has been announced. Under the hood, Oracle Function uh, is using FN, and Oracle Function is basically the fast platform or, of Oracle. So whenever it's available, uh, give it a try too. And with that, thanks a lot for your time.